Hello and welcome to the Michael Philip Michael Show or Scoop at Productronica 2023. I'm joined by Michael from CMS and Michael from BMK. Thanks for joining me, guys. I just really wanted to dig a little bit into some of the mega trends we're seeing here in Europe. We're hearing a lot about reshoring. I want to find out if that's actually the case and you're actually seeing some benefit there. And we're also hearing about talent shortages and the inventory bump coming through the um, through the supply chain. Those are the three topics I want to deal with. Michael, perhaps I can start with you and we can talk a little bit about um, reshoring. Are you seeing a reshoring trend? Are you seeing jobs come back from Asia or are you seeing less jobs going to Asia? I think to figure it out, it's more like to say it's slowed down if shops are going to Asia. Re really, really shoring we don't see so much. It was a little bit the case when COVID started. Mm -hmm. People were thinking about their security check, but then after a while, when it becomes more and more common to the people, uh, they started again. But reshoring I see, not for Europe, but what I see there is a reshoring or at least a new transfer to Southeast Asia. Okay, this is something I can see. It's out of China, yes, but not a real reshoring. Yeah. But what I can really admit is that we have more stable business in Europe. We are not have so many discussions with customers moving out of Europe yeah. just because lot size is becoming bigger. Yeah. They are staying with us. Well, I think news. that's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good news. Michael, what do you say? Uh, sort of bit, uh, same trend uh, as uh, Michael said, and um, I guess a lot of companies approached us uh, during uh, COVID and they promised us, okay, now that's the time for reshoring to Europe. And we did a lot of quotations uh, with some customers and uh, in fact, nothing, nothing happened. And um, of course, to, to secure supply chain, um, there's a move out of China, but still a lot of PCBs uh, are being assembled, being assembled in, in, over there. in, in yeah. China, yes. yes. Yeah. And do you think security was the main reason they were looking at it and they, they were, COVID kind of shook them a little bit and now they're kind of a little bit more resolved on that, so they're less concerned? I think security, many of them saying it's because of security reasons. I think it's more some uncertainty. Mm. People were uncertain what will happen in the future and they turn the wheat and they try to keep the cards yeah. in the game. So looking forward, what can be done in the future? What I see, especially with new products, and I see the trends like digitalization, I see the trends in terms of environment discussions in Europe, people are more concentrating than on European suppliers. Mm. That's what it is. And I think this is much more of importance because it's not very beneficial to fight with existing borders. It's more of interest to get the new business on board. Yeah. And that's something which is beneficial for us. Yeah, I think it's interesting to think of one getting the new business on board and, and you know the environmental impact, the whole the whole ESG side of that. But also to see as we, we scale business when it gets to a certain volume, it doesn't immediately immediately get shifted over overseas. Michael, we've kind of moved from this just in time to just in case strategy with a lot of people. And I don't know if that's still prevalent. I know it was last year and maybe the year before. How are you seeing customers thinking now? Are they more cautious or are they trying to get back to a, a kind of a tighter, more dynamic supply chain? Yeah, we are facing the, the issue that the supply chain is not transparent anymore, even less than a few years ago. And it's not flexible anymore. It has been flexible many years ago and we you know, you, you just place an order and you can be sure that it's being delivered on time and you can do the production and you can do the billing. But uh, that's uncertain times and you have the non-cancelable, non-returnable uh, issue, which is, uh, uh, yeah, the industry needed to learn about that. And um, so these are things which uh, makes us uh, think about what we can do, discuss through our uh, to our customers or to the manufacturers and distributors. And yeah. there's no safety stock anymore. So everything, let's say, it's, uh, it's a different kind of approach to the supply chain. Uh, and uh, the customer needs to, or our customer as an EMS company, needs to understand what kind of things we are facing right now. Yeah. But I think the, 
understanding is uh, uh, from our customer side is there. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's clearly there. So that brings us on to the inventory issue, and that inventory was kind of constrained at the manufacturing side. Uh, it's forced huge growth in, in, in inventory within the EMS companies. Now there seems to be a bit of an inventory glut with some of the OEMs as well. How do you see that working its way through the, the supply chain, Michael? And obviously it has a, an impact on, on the way you run your business and your cash flow. I think you, the points you made are very clear. We are fighting with the cash flow. That's through because of the long lead times and the inventories we have to keep because of the huge orders which were placed with us, but the demand is now going down. That's one aspect. But the most, much more important from our point of view is we have to figure out what is a fair lead time for the market, which is fair for, for all partners, because we have to put the material through the supply chain. And what happened from my point of view in this moment in time, that they are not playing on the same, on a fair yeah. living playing field. Yeah. Because what, what happened in the past is, is the suppliers, as well as the distributors, try to save their benefits as much as possible. They increase lead times. And usually, if you see the actual situation, lead times must drop down dramatically. This doesn't happen. So what we don't want to have is we don't want to have an unfair approach now to the supplier side, what, what we need is a real fair level which can be kept, especially to keep in the future a certain level of stock in the supply chain and be able to finance this yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. What we are facing now is nearly impossible still. Today we have material in order for the next one and a half year which is absolutely insane. It's absolutely impossible. And I think the supply, especially the suppliers and the distributors, must help us to keep this on a fair level, which is beneficial for both parties. Yeah. And I think it's possible. I'm pre pretty much convinced it's possible, because if not, we will face the same what we see now. In the next half year again, we will have a shortage. Then we will have a ramp up shortage ramp up and it will took too much time yeah. and cost for everyone too much money. Yeah. Michael, do you think this is a classic bull whip effect or do you think there's more there's more to it? Do you see the end of that bull whip and a smoothing out or do we still have a lot of work to do in terms of collaboration and communication up and down the supply chain? It just came into my mind it's uh, the classical bull whip effect and um, I think uh, it needs a lot of uh, communication between all uh, parties and uh, what we are experiencing uh, right now is that uh, the demand is going down from the market. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so I think the, the inventory level will, yeah, let's say, balance out uh, in a way. But still, um, we, uh, from, from our customer side, the project side, as uh, Michael said, uh, it's an up and down. And, yeah. uh, uh, that's the classical effect which is not not very good to handle even with uh, a fully automated production it's it's not a good uh, effect that we need yeah. to face uh, and um, i think there's a lot of work to do is a lot of uh, integration things to do um, and most of all still um, there needed to be a transparent supply chain um, connecting systems together um, it's not done uh, by hand anymore, which is sometimes even still uh, mm -hmm. with some uh, manufacturers or distributors, and we need to change this and uh, to have this kind of yeah. uh, bull whip. Create some greater visibility. Yeah. And it's interesting what you say, because with a bull, with a bull whip, it levels out, but yeah. if there's further disruption, yes. it starts to move yes. again. So we're, we're challenged by constant disruptions in the, um, in the marketplace at the moment. So I think Michael made a difference. real good point. On one hand, we installed big systems which are intelligent enough to handle this stuff, but reality is, because of this situation, we are coming back to the people and they have to balance out these things. So we are depending on people and not on the systems. Yeah. And because of that, we will not be able to come to a real good, efficient supply chain again. Yeah. Yeah, we can, only it's have the, we can only have the efficiency if the supply chain has all the right data in it. And to, to 
be, to be able to do this, we need, as you, I think you said it, we need a real trust level in the supply chain again. Yeah. We must trust each other and not fight each other. Yeah. As long we are fighting each other, trying to make money out of every, out of everything, yeah. it won't be possible yeah. to balance this. Yeah. Now we've got to accept that everybody in the uh, supply chain is entitled to make a profit, and uh, and, and we we have to be practical about that. As we look at this, and as we look at over the last few years, we've had some really nice growth in Europe. Um, it's been quite substantial. One of the issues we're getting is a tight, tightening market for, for talent. There's, a, there's a, a talent issue, not just here. That's definitely the case in the US uh, and other regions as well. Is that challenging your business? And is that something that you are able to mitigate through, through different means? Michael, perhaps I can start with you. Yes, um, of course there's a talent shortage uh, in many, many different uh, kind of industries and I think uh, as an EMS company uh, we need to make sure that the awareness of our job, what we do, of our work with which, which we do is very important for the daily life, for the general industry. Yeah. And, um, Maybe due to the chip crisis, there's one positive effect. Uh, suddenly, uh, everybody knows about what is electronics, what is a chip. It's nothing to eat. It's something yeah. that can calculate and can do something. And uh, that's a very important thing. So uh, daily life or even, let's say, uh, an operation can be uh, stopped because some broken device or some missing uh, uh, surgery device because there's no chip anymore. So, and, and what we are or what we need to do as an EMS company, we are in industries which are very innovative, which are challenging, which are very highly interested and in, which are the trends for tomorrow. And that's a very attractive for talents to work in instead of working with an OEM with one specific product and being a small screw in the whole product. So yeah. at a, in, a, in an EMS company, you can change, you can change the world. Yeah. Michael, how do you see talent in the regions you're working in? I think I just First of all, I agree with the points he made and mm -hmm. to put it in one nutshell, it's quite simple. We as ENS companies have to sell ourselves much yeah. more better. Yeah. That's the key because we are competing with other companies. Yeah. We are a service level company, so we do services on one hand. But for the services, we need very high qualified people. Yeah. We have many different technology areas, either in the process technology, either in development, design. So what we must show in the market that we are a real attractive employer. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That we really are able to be a very good employer for the people. They can learn many things working for an EMS company. It's worthful and we have to show EMS is not something like a grey elephant yeah. is really a sexy business <laughs> and that's what it is that's what we need it yeah how do we make it seem because sexy? it will be in the future the same as today it will be even harder to get very high qualified people on board yeah. for example what we did we were um, because in the neighborhood was a huge company so they we were not able to compete so we really relocate our development office to Vienna close nearby to the technical university yeah. to be to show and give the people a better working environment and be able to get the people directly from the university yeah. so these are things as well you must change the way of working yeah and you've got to consider that and reaching out to academia I think is is really important but actually to say the talent isn't available where we are let's go where the talent is yes, yes. Um, you know that's a, that's another that's another part of it as well. The last part of the the, the talent equation I'm going to consider is: do we do you see the ability to grow your business with your current headcount through perhaps more investment in automation, uh, greater digital transformation, or are those things not not running in parallel at the moment, Michael? It's more in parallel because uh, I think, of course, we need uh, people to to. Uh, do the R&D for automation mm -hmm. uh, to have uh, KI to use KI uh, in a uh, useful way and to, you need 
high qualified people. And um, I think uh, we are in a business where we are not just mass production in high numbers uh, per year or lot sizes. So we are more like the uh, mixed uh, business or mixed uh, uh, volume. And this does not make it happen. We can do all fully automated. So uh, our challenge is even to, pro to produce at 2 a.m. in the morning high complex electronics with 100% uh, functionality. So um, sometimes it's not possible to do this automation. So you need both and yeah. you need to have the, the high mix automated in a way you can pay for it because yeah. in the end you need to pay for it. It's yeah. an investment and as well to have still people yeah. working the on the yes. What do you think? Yeah, I was really thinking how can this be done, but you should take into account that usually we need always a huge number of high qualified people. Yeah. So the low working level, which was a case in the past, just putting, yeah. mounting some, some components, yeah. it's gone. Yeah. So for each single item, for each single order, you need the right process in the right place. So you need qualified people. So what will happen without people, you can't do this. Yeah. And especially not without qualified people. And automation took place in the past, will, took place, will be there in the future as well, but it will not solve the problem of qualified people. No, you, still you need, need people, people qualified. you need more and more people who are able to manage the process, even if you see the just trained operators. Yeah. They are more and more qualified. We put a lot of effort in to qualify them for future shops, and if you lose them, you can't replace them immediately. It's not so easy. You cannot say, hey, going on the street and get an act, another one on board. Yeah. Just for example, we calculated today at least six months training time. They have the right level in place to be able to fill the orders which are which we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's so demanding. taking this into account, you can see it's not just a high-end fire. We have to keep the people on board. We have to look forward to get people which are able and capable to be yeah. trained. And that's what it is. So overall, you cannot overcome it just with automation. No, it's part of the equation, isn't it? So guys, thanks very much for talking to me. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, uh, keep recruiting people. Keep promoting the industry. Stay sexy. <laughs> keep, keep telling people how, how I think what's important is you can work on projects that are going into space. Maybe as an example, I'm not really sexy, but maybe we can get someone else. Thanks so much for your time. Thank pleasure you. Pleasure to chat to you and let's talk again soon. Thanks. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you.